Welcome to the program. A man was shot dead while eight students were injured in a clash between a group of raiders and students. Police said a group of about 50 people had raided St. Charles Motego Secondary in Ruruta area. That's on Sunday evening, vandalizing property and in the process injuring eight students and three teachers. After an alarm was raised, the police rushed to the scene and managed to kill one of the attackers. According to Dagoretti police boss Matthew Guio, the attackers were dressed in Maasai shukas when they staged the attack at about 11 p.m. The motive of the raid is yet to be established, but officials say some locals have been having issues with the school's location. The school is privately owned. That's why sita ndo tulisikia dom yetu mmoja kiganduru akatuambia tuamke ati kuna moto tulipoamka wakatuambia kila mtu aondoke kwenye box sasa senye walianza kupigana mawe tukaambua ati ati wanaingia ati nani maboys wameanza kuja kuesha moto lakini tukikaa tukaambua ati tuanze kuomba ati ni strike watoto hawanja usika katika mgomo huo kuna intruders waliotoka nje na wakaingia ndani ya shule wakuwa wamejifunga vichwa mambo ya insecurity na wakaanza kudreaten watoto usiku na kuna wale watoto wachache ambao wanasemekana walikuwa wamepanga na wale what what you want is come make sure you uh, come we are going to deploy officers to ensure you are safe so so uh, the government of Kenya now wants the Federal Republic of Somalia to move with speed and appoint members of the tripartite, uh, tripartite team rather, to help Kenya kickstart the repatriation process of thousands of refugees in the country. Speaking during the high-level roundtable meeting on durable solutions for the displaced persons and refugees, Interior Cabinet Secretary Joseph Olelenku said all other parties have appointed their members to the commission. Olelenku said following the signing of the tripartite agreement last year, 20,000 refugees have returned to their country voluntarily. For over 20 years now, Somalia has experienced instability leading to collapse in institutions. <coughs> However, through the intervention of the African Union, and more specifically Amazon, the country is currently witnessing stability with the government of the Federal Republic of Somalia taking control of most of the parts of the country. This is a positive development that will go a long way in providing an opportunity to rebuild Somalia so that the country can reclaim its rightful place in the family of peaceful nations. The improving situation in Somalia is not only good to Kenya, but to Africa and the world at large. The role of Kenya in the humanitarian sector on the continent cannot be overstressed. Kenya remains one of the highest refugee hosting country, offering protection to the forcibly displaced in this region and beyond. The two main political coalitions are currently holding their parliamentary group meetings ahead of Parliament's reopening tomorrow. The Jubilee Coalition is holding its parliamentary group meeting in State House, where members are expected to review their performance in Parliament in the last session and also make plans for the next session. Now, among the plans, as revealed by the National Assembly Majority Leader Aidan Duale yesterday, is to revisit the, contro uh, the controversial Waki envelope, where MPs plan to summon Waki to parliament to shed more light on the list of key post-election violence suspects. Cord and other, on the other hand are holding its parliamentary group meeting in Naivasha where we are now joined by our political affairs editor Ben Kitili with more details. Um, ben, I'm sure they have quite a bit lined up uh, in terms of discussions including if you like the numerical disadvantage they have in parliament. To give us more details. Uh, Edith, it is a sunny day here in Naivasha. We are coming to you live from the Great Valley Lodge, and we're hoping that uh, the 
Accord coalition will be coming up out with some sunny uh, resolutions following this uh, uh, this group meeting that they are having. Uh, it is currently uh, they are currently holed up uh, inside this uh, conference room just by, uh, besides me, of course, uh, led by uh, the leader former Prime Minister Waila Odinga and his co-principals, that is former Vice President Kalonzo Mosioka and Bungoma Senator Moses Wetangula. And as Parliament reopens tomorrow, there is a stack of things that they are discussing to make sure that their presence is felt in this second session of the 11th Parliament. And as you mentioned, Edith, one of the top, one of the top uh, items on that agenda is discussing their, so to say, numerical disadvantage in the 11th Parliament, uh, both in the Senate and in the National Assembly. Uh, we, had, we, we, we did see in the first session of Parliament where uh, Jubilee, with their numbers, were able to bulldoze over some of uh, the parliamentary business and code are uh, hoping to be able to a counter that to be able to overcome that numerical disadvantage there is they did manage to do that once when they uh, sh shot down the uh, the miscellaneous amendment bill and they're hoping to be able to do that on a regular basis that is one of the things that they will be discussing they will be hoping to tap into any loose ends that jubilee may have concerning their uh, numbers in parliament to be able to lobby those uh, particular members of parliament to support uh, their business in parliament that is one of the things that we'll be uh, taking a look at of course there is a uh, report which is said to be debated uh, to be brought in parliament with the ruling jubilee coalition wanting that same uh, uh, report the tgsc report to be looked into and the name of the president or kenyatta expunged from that particular report uh, court will be hoping uh, to counter that and uh, and be able to shoot that down as well there is also the westgate probe report that is will be discussed after the investigations by the two parliamentary committees that is the defense and national and foreign relations committee and the national security and administration committees uh, uh, both uh, both sides of the of parliament will be hoping to will be uh, willing or hoping to discuss that particular uh, Westgate probe report and the two sides of parliament are set to clash on the same and as I've mentioned the numbers in parliament will be a, a key factor in this second session of parliament court just uh, hoping to be able to counter that in all the other business that, that, that will be involved in this second parliament jubilee as you say they are holding their parliamentary group meeting in nairobi at state house and one of the things they are discussing is a bill that will be passed of course code will be looking into that as well there are eight constitutional bills that are said to be passed by the 27th of august this year and code of course will also be looking into that another thing that the code coalition will be looking to hoping to look into is uh, the the various individual parties that are making up this particular coalition to be able to diffuse uh, some of the tensions so to speak that are currently boiling under the odm party is set to hold its national elections in about three weeks time from the 28th of this month to the first of march and there have been uh, a few tensions, so to speak, uh, on the Orange Party. Uh, the same goes for the Wiper Democratic Party. Those are some of the uh, partners in this court coalitions. The court coalition group will be hoping to diffuse some of those tensions as they embark on the second session of Parliament and uh, be, uh, as, as, they, as they hope to engage the Jubilee Coalition in both the Senate to be able to counter some of those issues, to be able to go as a joint unit and uh, currently they are still hold up in this meeting uh, they were saying by this time at one o'clock they will be coming out uh, to tell us what they have resolved we are waiting we are uh, coming to you live from the Rift, Rift Valley Lodge we'll be giving you details of what this parliamentary group meeting for the Code Coalition comes up with back to you in studio well, thank you very much, Ben Kitili. If you caught him right at the tail end, he's currently at Na in Naivasha. He's at Naivasha Lodge where Cord uh, is currently holding the parliamentary group meeting ahead of Parliament's reopening tomorrow. Elsewhere, four children aged between two and six years died yesterday after a fire raised down their home in Gatambara village that's in Odaya constituency. The four... Um, among them twin boys had been left behind by their parents who had gone to church in the afternoon. 
The fire that started at around 3.30 p.m. consumed the five-roomed timber house and property of unknown value. Now, according to neighbors, they heard cries of the children, which they dismissed as punishment by their parents. It is after a few minutes that they saw smoke billowing from the house, prompting them to check if all was well. However, by the time they arrived, it was too late. Sasa labda mama yao wako huko na labda ni kukosa wamekosa sasa ni kuadhibiwa kidogo. Alafu baada kikabili tukasikia mtu amepiga duru mara moja. Kusikia duru tukaangalia pande hii nyumba iko tukaona moshi imetoka juu sana. Alafu tukakibia kukibia nilikuwa kwanza kuvika hapo kwa mlango nikapiga mlango nikaingia na mlango. Kuingia na mlango nikakuta moto ume, umejaa huko tukaona hatuwezi tukaingia huko ndani now we know that preliminary investigations suggest that that fire in Odaya was caused by a petrol generator in the house Elsewhere, more than 300 fish ponds have been constructed in Kajiado County in a government project that cost 8 million shillings with the aim of ensuring food security and the creation of wealth and employment. Now, Kajiado, which hosts the traditional non-fish eating Maasai, has been targeted by the Livestock and Agriculture Ministry for having a climate conducive for fish farming. Speaking during the Eat More Fish campaign at Isinya, Kajiado County, over the weekend, and Kajado Governor David uh, Kindiane noted that the project will directly influence over 3,000 youth in the county. The government has released 647 million shillings to boost fish farming in the country. The money channeled through the Transition Authority will be used to construct 20 ponds in every sub-county as well as learning institutions. It will also be used to provide fingerlings and extension services to the farmers. What an exciting project project for the people of Kajiado County. Uh, but to the coast where German, a German-owned cruise ship, MV Hamburg, today docked at the port of Mombasa. The ship carrying 362 passengers on board is the second cruise ship to explore Kenyan waters since the year started. While disembarking, the tourists were handed flower carnations and goodie bags with Kenyan artifacts before being ferried to various hotels across the coastal city. During their visit, they are scheduled to tour the Savo East National Park and later the Shimba Hills Game Reserve. Following their arrival, Kenya Tourism Board officials said there was renewed hope that more cruise ships will dock at the port of Mombasa following a lull in, private, in piracy activities due to heightened security in the Indian Ocean. More are being done in terms of making sure the Indian Ocean waters are safe. We expect to see more cruise ships coming in. But for now, we are glad to receive this ship and we are glad to say that uh, much as they are coming for one day, we believe that this is an endorsement of Kenya as a destination for cruise tourism. Thank Standard Group's Radio Maisha concluded its four-day roadshow yesterday with a grand stop at Kondele Market in Kisumu where entertainers engaged the public in a free mini-concert. The caravan wound its way across the South Rift before dipping into Kisi and passing through Kakamega to conclude at the lakeside. The roadshow was conducted in partnership with the Kenya Power and Lighting Steamer Sako that recently launched operations in the western region and featured performances from comedians, singers and presenters of Kenya's favorite right radio station <laughs> have partnered with Radio Maisha, we are thinking, we are seeing that we are going to have a quite a wider impact. Um, the mammoth crowds we have witnessed in Luanda, in uh, Kondele, Kisumu and in uh, Kibuye, uh, we, we are going to see a lot of uh, people coming in to uh, come and open accounts. I think uh, this is going to, quite, to have quite a big impact on, on our circle. Welcome back to KT and News Desk, where I'm now joined by Dr. Kisa Jumangewa. He says he's used to being called Dr. Kisa, who's joining us. He is the Director of Veterinary Services in the country. Thank you for joining us. Thank you very much. Okay, so um, let's kick off by asking you what your mandate is um, as a Director of Veterinary Services in the country. What does that entail? Veterinary Services are there to take care of uh, our health, mm -hmm. animal health and environmental health. And these are regulated based on international requirements. So what is your specific role as a director of veterinary services nationwide? 
I oversee the implementation of animal health, animal production, animal welfare, and regulations that, that, are, that are related to them. All right. Including the chapter 360. I'm assuming that devolution of veterinary services will also fall into your mandate. Um, so how is that going in the country? As the chief veterinary officer for World Organization for Animal Health, OIE, I have to actually assure all trading partners in the world that the animal health things in Kenya are, are going on well, mm -hmm. that uh, there is no insecurity in terms of uh, poisoning, uh, drug residues, or transmission of diseases from animal to people or from animal products to human beings. But how are you going to ensure that that happens throughout the country, especially now that there's going to be movement of livestock between counties? So if it is certified in this county, do you then need a certificate to transport, say, a herd of cows or a herd of sheep into another county? One way of controlling disease outbreak or spread is by use of livestock movement permit. Mm -hmm. And livestock movement permit is issued by one county to another one, which is actually giving a no objection. No objection will state the conditions that are required for livestock to move. They must have been vaccinated. Mm -hmm. They are free from ectoparasite or endoparasite. Now, we need to use one document, Republic of Kenya document, livestock movement permit, for example, which is serialized so that we know yeah. from, from which county the animal is moving from. Okay, well, there have been reports that there's been corruption in terms of issuing out these permits so that people get a false permit, the animals have not been checked, and then we end up eating uh, meat that hasn't really been checked. So how are you going to curb that? I have not heard of corruption, but there have been movement permits that were not from my office. Mm -hmm. For example, there was a movement permit made by the uh, county government of Bomet, which moved animals to the export slaughterhouse. But it is because we are not talking. Mm -hmm. Now we are actually talking. I was with the five uh, Council of uh, Governors members in Serena on that year. I, I was in Panari with some uh, county executive committee members describing and discussing the way forward. And we have actually agreed we'll be having a uniform movement uh, yeah, instrument. Right. We'll also be having uniform transport, uh, certificate of transport, dispatch notes things that are to do with the regulations. Okay. What about food security? There's, a, there's been reports of recent escalation of foot and mouth disease in livestock. How has that affected the production of beef um, and other meats in the country? Livestock disease actually affects us economically, socially, and even the well-being. So when there is an out outbreak of an unfavorable disease, such as foot and mouth disease, there is quarantine. Mm -hmm. We stop movement of animal and animal products. But the disease itself causes severe reduction in production. It is also able to cause death, which, which means we are, we are losing. Right. So we have to put measures. In the ideal situation, we actually need to vaccinate the animals prior to the outbreaks because prevention is better than So is there vaccination going on currently on the livestock that have not been Ye affected? Yes. Okay. The livestock that have not been affected, we are doing ring vaccination. But the purchasing Is this happening in every county or specific? Many countries? counties. The latest one was uh, actually in Nandi. It was in Transoya. It started from uh, Nyandarua, like Kipia, Oma Bay, uh, was in Gishu. Almost all over the country. Uh -huh. And the reason is we were not well prepared because the counties did not buy the vaccine in good time. They required to order the vaccine so that it is manufactured by Kenya Veterinary Vaccine. Production Institute. Mm -hmm. Thank you very much for coming into studio this afternoon. Unfortunately, we've run out of time. Dr. Kisa Juma, who is the Director of Veterinary Services in the country. Two more business news, though. And William Lay has been appointed the new chairman of East Africa Portland Cement. He's well known as Bill Lay, and he takes over from Mark Ole Kalboro. The appointment was made by the Ministry of Industrialization and Enterprise Development and is hoped to put to rest a near two-month huggle on the position uh, s uh, rather on the position. Speaking at the firm's Athi River headquarters, Bill Lay noted that he would be instrumental in helping the company benefit from the over $100 million worth of infrastructure projects planned in the East African region. The listed cement manufacturer has over the last one month been also entangled on the position of the French uh, conglomerate Lafarge on its board.
Let's have a look at the sports now and begin with rugby. And, you know, after winning the bowl competition in Wellington, New Zealand, the Kenya Sevens team jetted back into the country Monday morning with a low reception uh, with the team's coach, Paul True, absent. Kenya got eight points from the leg. And the technical bench is, however, optimistic that the new tactical approach instilled in the team is not short term, but a revolution of the Sevens game for consistency in future. Nick Mudimba has, has the details. A team that has seen lots of success than any other team in the country fumbled in Las Vegas and again failed to make it to the cup contention in Wellington. Well, the Kenya Sevens national team jetted back in the country to an initial reception. Coach Paul Drew and a large part of his technical side did not accompany the team. With the Japan and Hong Kong legs just around the corner, the team was glad that despite the dismal outing, they are developing well and lots of positives are gained in every outing. The change in tactical approach is not a worry to the team, but a glorious beginning of consistency and preparation of a rugby powerhouse. We thank the fans for the support also they've been giving us and uh, just to add them to be patient with the team as we are undergoing a phase, uh, a phase that will make us be one of the top nations and the top rugby playing teams in the, in the world. Um, the desired outcomes will always come, but as you can see we're trying to create a culture of excellence, something that will last uh, as, uh, longer than just a quick fix and a quick ending. With full support from the government and sponsors Kenya Airways, the team which felt they did not achieve in the two legs had more to smile about, inspired by the fact that the journey had just begun. Don't look back. Spend a bit of time looking at what are the good things that you did during this particular match, during the Las Vegas one. How can you multiply those good things that you did? It's good to note that Kenya was the second highest try scorer in Wellington last weekend. The only country that scored more tries than Kenya was New Zealand. Eh? And therefore we have no doubt as Kenyans, we have no doubt as government, you make it. Don't mourn. A focus now shifts to Japan and Hong Kong. Kenya will renew the rivalry with South Africa in Pool B of the sixth round of the Tokyo Sevens taking place at the Prince Chichibu Stadium on 22nd to 23rd of March. The other teams in the group are South Africa, Argentina and host Japan. Kenya won the ball in Wellington to remain eighth on the log with 47 points. The team will have one week break and will go back to camp full swing from next week. Nicholas Mudimba, KTN Sports. It's now time to wind up this edition of KTN News Desk. I've been frantically looking for a did you know fact. The internet is not being cooperative with me today. But remember, speaking of the internet, you can log on to www.standardmedia.co.ke for the stories we've aired today and many more that are being updated by the minute. My name is Edith Kimani. Boni Tunya, congratulations to him and his brand new daughter, Lulu. He's gone on paternity leave for a while. He'll be back soon. But do pass him your love on Twitter. And until tomorrow... Yeah. <laughs> Have fun. Be good. This is what happens to me when Tunya is not around. I just become blank headed. My name is Edith Kimani. Good afternoon.